Hello and welcome. If you are watching this, it means you have just purchased your Digital Art Junkie Basics Pack. These are my go-to brushes that you can use to create virtually any design. In this video, I'm just going to show you a breakdown of each of these and how to use them. So the first brush we're going to cover is the Sketch Brush. You may be familiar with this brush as it's in most of my brush packs. And this brush is just supposed to model a number two pencil. So it's pressure sensitive, meaning if you press down hard on it, you'll get a thicker, darker line. And if you lighten up the pressure with your pencil, you'll get a thinner line. I use this brush to create my messy layer that just acts as the foundation for the rest of my design. The next brush is the outline brush. This is an ink-like brush that has a lot of stabilization, meaning it'll give you a very clean line. A light touch will result in a thin line, and the harder you press down, the thicker the line will become. I'll use this brush in two ways. The first way is by creating a new layer and moving it underneath my sketch layer. Then I'll outline some of the major shapes in the design. So in this case, it's going to be the shape of the face, the mouth, the neck, the hair. Filling in these shapes with color and making sure they're in different layers. The reason I do this is because I'll create clipping masks above each of these shapes so that any detail work that I do inside of it will remain inside the shape. The second way that I use the outline brush is by creating a layer that sits above my sketch layer and just going over some of the outlines I did with that initial sketch and cleaning up some of that line work so that my foundation is easier to follow. The next brush is the mono line brush. This is an essential brush that I use for outlines or different line work because it has no pressure sensitivity. This means that no matter how hard or lightly I press down, the line is going to have the same width from start to finish. The next brush is the color block brush. This is just a really easy to use kind of marker like brush that I use just to fill in big areas of color really quickly. It has no stabilization so it's going to follow the movement of your hand to a T. I'll use this brush for portrait making a lot to block out some of those major shapes of color that I can find within the face. So a lot of this is like shadows, highlights, red tones, white tones, things like that. And I will do it all inside the clipping mask that I've created above my face layer. So I have two textured shading brushes in this pack. One is rough and one is soft. And I'll use both of them to create artwork like this when I'm doing portraits. The soft brush has a painterly-like appearance to it. There are kind of like brush strands that you can see towards the end of it, and it's very pressure sensitive. So the harder you press down, the darker and more opaque it will be, and the lighter you put pressure on your pencil, the more translucent your brush stroke will be. The rough shading brush acts in a very similar way in regards to its pressure sensitivity, but there's just a bit more texture. It's a little bit rougher and gives a more realistic skin appearance. I will apply it to a portrait by just selecting the tones I want to work with and starting off lightly with my pressure and just working in slow circles and gradually selecting and gradually selecting some of the mid-tones as I go through and selecting different tones as I go through to create a nice blended look. With the soft shading brush, I'll do the same thing, but because it's a little more painterly, I'll get a little bit more bold with it. I think that these lines look better if they stand out more. Next up is the dry paintbrush. This is supposed to look like an old paintbrush that you left around the house and then tried to use with acrylic paint. It's pressure sensitive, so the harder you press down, the more opaque your line will be. This is what it looks like in action on one of my pieces. As you can see, it's just subtle in the background, and I just think it provides a really nice accent. Next up is the blending brush. You want to use this brush with a light touch and gently move your pencil into circles. If you press down hard, you're going to get a really dark circle like this. You want to just gently run your brush in circles until you have an opacity or a blended look that you are comfortable with. The grain brush is one of my favorites. It provides a really beautiful speckled texture, and the harder you press down, the darker that texture will get. Next, we have the cloudy watercolor brush, which you may recognize from my realistic watercolor pack. This brush is kind of unpredictable, which I think is pretty fun. It basically works by providing random splotches that, are, that vary in size and opacity. Now let's take a look at all three of these brushes in action. 
The cloudy watercolor brush is used best in short strokes with a medium size. And you can press down harder as you get towards the bottom to create a more gradient look. Then select a lighter color and just keep layering until you have something you're happy with. With the grain brush, I like to select dark and light colors and press harder as I get towards the edges of the circle. If you want the speckles more visible, simply increase the size of your brush. I use circular motions when using the grain brush. The blending brush can be used in a similar way by pressing down harder towards the edge of your circle and lightening up pressure as you get towards the highlighted portion. I change up the colors and I just press down really slightly at first and just gradually press harder until I have a look that I like. From there we have the charcoal brush which provides this really rough, rugged texture, similar to that of charcoal on paper. So this brush is pressure sensitive. The harder you press down, the more opaque it will be. When using this brush, I'll either move my pencil in slight circles or I'll use a tapping motion. If you like cross hatching, then the hashing brush is gonna make your life a million times easier. Instead of drawing out five different individual lines, this one already has it done for you. So use this brush in quick strokes. If you press down like a little slowly, it'll create this little circular motion, which can still look nice, but use quick fast strokes if you wanna get that cross hatched look. It also looks really great if you layer it on top of itself. I use the hatching brush just to create slight accents in some of my portrait pieces. The last brush in the pack is the light brush. This brush has a glowing like look that when used on top of a dark background gives the appearance that it is literally made of light. It's pressure sensitive so the lighter you press, the smaller the halo around that line is going to be. To use the paper textures, start by coming over to your actions panel and select insert a file. Choose the paper texture that you want and make sure it covers your entire canvas. This layer should sit above all of your artwork. Click in and mess around with some of the light settings. I will use multiply, color burn, linear burn, or overlay. Test each one of these out on your art until you find what works best. If you choose multiply, duplicate the layer and bring it all the way to the bottom. As you can see, the paper texture adds a certain dimension to the artwork that brings out some of its deep colors and just gives it a little oomph. This right here is the watercolor paper. Next is the parchment paper, the straight linen, and finally the rough acrylic. Thank you so much for buying these brushes. These really are my go-to brushes and the reason for them is because they are so versatile. Each brush can be used in many different ways, and as you experiment with them, you'll find that they can be used to create texture, detail, portraits, watercolor, really anything you can possibly think of. Thank you so much again for buying these. I hope you enjoy this video. Make sure you follow me on my social media, on Instagram, on TikTok, and if you have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to either comment on my social media or send me an email and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions.